Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So as soon as they get close by, let's say that you set your radius at 10 feet. Somebody comes into that 10 feet, you can program inside of your app to say, okay, do nothing. But as soon as they leave that radius again, then send them something. So you have full control over your messaging. Yeah. Yeah, so it is, it is limited, like you know, other you know, signaling technology. It gets screwed up by water and human beings because human beings are big piles of water, basically. So that Bluetooth signal, it's just kind of shooting out a big blob of you know, signal around it. Well, so if you're inside a wall, I think that it would depend on the material that the wall was made of. And Right now, since the beacon technology has only been around since August, we're seeing lots of adoption and lots of high profile uses of iBeacons, but it's still hard for people to say, yes, it's going to work in this exact situation. Um, if you embedded it inside of a wall, it might work, but I think the best thing is if you brought on a development team, we'd put it in the wall and we'd do some initial testing before you did some sort of large scale capital investment in an in iBeacon app. Yep. Correct. So it does, you have no indication of the direction of the signal. So if I'm standing here and there's a beacon five feet away, my phone can detect that I'm roughly five feet away but it doesn't know if that beacon is anywhere within this radius. You know what I'm saying? So um, that is a limitation, but if you think about this, if you deploy a grid of beacons, then you can start getting into some really interesting situations. <laughs> and uh, I, I pulled up an Android app, and I'm like, maybe I can detect beacons, and everything was just vague names, and I'm like, all right, that makes sense. Um, that brings up a question, it is, I would love nothing more than to walk into an Apple store and fuck up their beacons to get this <laughs> across the hall, just, just for fun and games. But what, what, when you're mastering a, a particular beacon, how safe are they from being hackable? That's a great question. So the question is, how hackable are these things? You're broadcasting this serial number to the world, and you're having an app interpret that signal and create a function. What's stopping you or you know, kind of people from putting together apps that can kind of work over the system, generate coupons for free or uh, something like that? And it really depends on the beacon manufacturer. Some of them have built-in security tools inside of them. All of them eventually will, but some are better than others. Um, these ones made by Qualcomm have kind of a standard security protocol in them, and I think you'll see most of the other beacon manufacturers adopt that in the next couple of months. But basically, that, that serial number that it's sending out, it's changing secretly in real time. Like they, they do a rolling change of the numbers and people don't have public access to that and neither do the, the, the developers. Basically there's like encrypted transfers going on. That being said, you know, somebody determined enough can hack anything. But you're starting to see with these wide, you know, large scale adoptions of iBeacon, you know, in NFL stadiums, uh, baseball stadiums, these are huge implementations and these companies are deciding that the technology is safe enough to implement it. Yeah. Um, so it kind of captures a contact information of the person and contact them later when they're with other image? Oh, definitely. So you could totally do something like that. The question is, could you have a situation where, let's say somebody came into Best Buy and then they left later, or they left, 
Could you message them later based on the fact that they were in Best Buy on Sunday at 2.30 p.m.? Yeah, you totally could. 